Well, good morning, friends. Welcome to the podcast. It's Sunday morning. It's nine o'clock Pacific time. It's nine o'clock in Arizona. Thank you for tuning in. It's podcast time with Brother Mike on Sunday mornings. Thank you for uh, your prayers for yesterday's service in Carlsbad. The uh, There was a mix-up of some kind with our uh, uh, church that was supposed to attend the meetings. Then nobody from the church attended, so the attendance was very low. Something screwed up somewhere, so sorry about that. But uh, we had a wonderful time of teaching yesterday, and uh, thank you very much for your prayers. Please remember at the Arizona Deliverance Center, uh, I'm in Oceanside right now, but I'm heading back uh, tomorrow, going back home. And um, Thursday and Friday nights, we have a live service at the Arizona Deliverance Center at 7 o'clock, preaching, teaching, healing, and deliverance at both services. You know, we're located downtown in Phoenix. We're at Osborne and 15th Avenue. It's a red brick building there on the west side of the road on 15th Avenue. And we'll hope you're planning on attending. Please bring somebody that needs to be healed or delivered. God will uh, be more than happy to help them. And that's what I love about the Lord. He's always more than happy to help you. Yes. Also, remember our Monday night Zoom for ladies. We have Wednesday and Saturday night Zoom services for everybody. The services are extremely effective, very anointed, and you can send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I'll send you the code and the password, and you'll be good to go. And uh, we're having a children's deliverance service coming up in September. Those things are absolutely fantastic. I hope you'll take advantage of them. And bring your preteen to the uh, service. I got another good one for you today. It's in Luke chapter 13. I use Luke 13 a lot in my ministry because it's the chapter on the woman with the spirit of infirmity. The old woman that had a spirit of infirmity, she had it for 18 years. She was all bent over. And uh, when the demon was cast out of the woman, she stood up immediately right in the middle of the synagogue service. Absolutely amazing. People were like stunned because they knew the woman. They knew she was totally disabled. <clears throat> and she just stood right right up just like that. Well, um, uh, this is a different part of chapter 13. It's really good. I wanted to share it with you. It'll help you get it'll help give you some understanding about sin and bad things that happen to people. It's really interesting. Luke chapter 13, verse 1 says, There was present at this season. Uh, some that told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Well, this is an incident that Josephus talks about <clears throat> in book 18 in his uh, section on antiquities. He mentions this. Apparently what had happened was 3,000 Galileans had entered the temple and they were, um, I guess, political, politically against Rome, and they were against Pilate, and they were people who were rebelling. Well, um, Pilate had them all murdered, 3,000 people dead in the temple, and their blood mixed in with some of the blood for the animal sacrifices for... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, worshiping Jehovah. And um, <clears throat> Jesus asked the question in verse number two, which is really interesting. He says, do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans that were not killed by Pilate? And in verse three, Jesus says, no. But in addition to that, they not only were they not worse sinners than the ones that weren't murdered, he said, if you don't repent, you're going to be perished. You are going to perish. Greek word apollomy, it means to, <clears throat> to be destroyed or be ruined. 
And then he mentions another incident that happened locally there that none of us know anything about in the village of Salome. He says, how about those 18 people the tower fell on in Salome and killed them? Do you think they were worse sinners above the people that are living in Jerusalem? And Jesus says, no. Verse 5, no. I tell you, unless you repent, you will all <clears throat> you will all likewise follow me be destroyed or be ruined. Weird. Very strange discussion. Uh, apparently, uh, Salome had a big tower there or something, and the building codes weren't up to snuff. And boom, the thing collapsed, and all these people got killed. What's Jesus saying here? Look, bad things happen to good people all the time. Good things happen to bad people all the time. Sin is a very strange commodity in humanity. Sometimes it's, it's instantaneous destruction. Sometimes it's gradual destruction. Sometimes the destruction doesn't occur until after the person is dead and they're in hell. Sin is weird. Sin doesn't seem to add up. But sooner or later, be sure your sin will find you out. What Jesus is saying here is that the theory that people who are really bad sinners, something bad happens to them all the time, is false. And people that don't sin that much, they're, they're very... Uh, you know, weak sinners, sometimes really bad things happen to them. Cancer, car accidents, and so on. And so what Jesus was saying there was, hey, you can't judge people's sin by the disasters that strike them. Sometimes the innocent are killed. Sometimes the guilty go free. Okay? Kind of like the OJ syndrome. And this Greek word is essential here, metanoeo. He says to the people, look, unless, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Repentance, metanoeo, is a Greek word that means to change your mind and go back the other direction. And repentance was one of the main themes of the great preaching of John the Baptist. He routinely re -pre preached repentance <clears throat> because repentance has a sowing and reaping capacity to it. When you sow, there's reaping. When you're reaping, somebody sowed something. <clears throat> and Jesus used agriculture <clears throat> to describe that quite often. He would, he would say, hey, we planted this fruit, this seed, and that fruit came up. This fruit didn't come up because that wasn't the seed we planted. We planted these seeds, and that fruit came up. When you plant a seed, it doesn't come up right away. It doesn't come up at the same pace as all the other seeds, but eventually it grows if it's properly watered. He said, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Luke chapter 15, Jesus said, there's great joy in heaven over one sinner who repents as opposed to 99 other Christians who already repented. <clears throat> the joy in heaven is always over the new convert who repents. Notice it says, Repentance, not read a canned sinner's prayer on a card at a rally. Repentance is something that occurs inside the person's inner man. And then when that actually happens and the person truly is born again and they truly repent, there is great joy in heaven. Every person who repents 
has this joy cover their lives. In Luke chapter 24, it, they were preaching. It said that re repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations. Luke 24 was part of the Great Commission, and Jesus was giving his final words before he went back to heaven. What were those final words? Well, there was Mark 16, Matthew 28, and Luke 24, the Great Commission. And our job is to preach repentance and remissions of sins in Jesus' name among all nations. Repentance is the key. You cannot have Christianity without repentance. People have to change. Matano Eo, they change their attitude towards sin, which then results in their behavior changing. If you know a born again Christian, who keeps on sinning, has no remorse for their sin, doesn't make any attempt to change, and doesn't change, that's a red flag that person was never actually born again. They just had a mental experience with Christ. That's a red flag. In Peter's great sermon on Pentecost, he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In chapter 3, he said, Repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so the times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. Here you see a lack of repentance causes misery and sorrow in a person's life. And the refreshings from God do not come because the person has not repented changed their attitude towards sin, and got, went back the other, other way. You're going this way, and you repented, you go back the other way. And you change. Christians who do not change, who keep continue living in sin, that's a red flag to haven't spiritually been born again. Yeah, in Acts chapter 17, Paul said, and those times in the past, when people were ignorant, God winked at it. But now he commands all men everywhere to repent. Repentance. Matano Eo. People change and they go back the other direction. But first they change mentally. Here. Which causes the behavior to change and go back. Matthew chapter 4. The first sermon on a Jesus' mouth was what? Repentance. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, he taught all this stuff about these people dying, and he was explaining to them, look, no, they weren't worse sinners than the people that didn't die. And in fact, if you don't repent, eventually something's going to happen to you. He then tells the parable not of the fig tree, that was the one that was in the, related to the middle of the tribulation. He tells the parable of the fruitless fig tree. Verse 6, he spoke this parable to them. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit on the tree and didn't find any. This happens a lot, apparently, with these fig trees. That happened to Jesus one time. He went through the tree there, and he didn't find any figs on it, and it was a season of figs. Well, this tree wasn't producing, so he put a curse on it. He spoke a curse on that fig tree, and when they came through that area a day or two later, bang, the fig tree had died from the roots up, which is the opposite of how a tree dies. It always draw, dies from the top to the bottom. This tree died from the roots up. When the curse landed upon the tree, the roots of the tree, the heart of the tree died. And the disciples were amazed at that curse Jesus put on that tree. Well, it was a training experiment. Jesus was illustrating the power of Holy Spirit spoken words, the power of words that are spoken with true faith. 
illustrating to them how they could move mountains, not just put curses on trees. Well, in this parable, this is the fruitless fig tree. And Jesus said that this farmer came there and he looked at it and he said, wow, there's no, there's no figs on this tree. Verse 7, then he said to the dresser of the vineyard, the guy running the vineyard, behold, these years, three years we've been coming here, three years, looking for fruit on this fig tree. And it's not on there. Cut the thing down. Cut it down. Okay, the Tower of Salome was cut down. It fell down. Right, Pilate cut down the Galileans. They were slaughtered. And in this illustration here, he says, cut this fig tree down. The thing's unproductive. But you can see it here clearly. God's grace said, verse 8, Lord, let it alone this year. And then I will dig around it. And I will put dung in it. Okay. Copria is uh, a manure. Dung. I will throw dung in it, it says. And if it doesn't bear fruit, okay. We'll cut it down. We'll cut the thing down. So here you see a twofold illustration here the nation of Israel. And you can see a third one, Jesus' ministry. Notice he said three years here. This was at the end of Jesus' ministry where he was entering the fourth year of his ministry when he, was, when he was murdered and went to Calvary. He said, hey, we've been coming here for three years. Okay, let's give, it, let's give them some grace. And we'll go into the fourth year. That's exactly what happened. Forty years later, the Romans came through Jerusalem and ended the nation of Israel and destroyed it. Forty years later, 70 AD, the Romans came through and destroyed the nation of Israel, which is exactly what Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas want to do to Israel to this day. There's a major war about ready to start in the Middle East. They want Israel destroyed just exactly like Rome did. They want the exact thing to happen to them. So grace and mercy says, no, we'll give them another chance. And Jesus did. He gave them another chance. When he cried over the temple on the mount, he wept that day. Shortest verse in the Bible says Jesus wept. He was crying over this fig tree parable. They had been given the three years. They had been given part of his fourth year. And they hadn't repented. And therefore, the fig tree was going to be cut down. Jerusalem and Israel was going to be cut down and destroyed. That's exactly what happened. The other meaning of the parable is you and I to this day, 2,000 years later. Many bad people have nothing bad happen to them. And many good people have bad things happen to them. And it goes on and on. Eh? Just because someone's a horrible sinner doesn't mean something hor horrible and horrific are going to happen to them. For example, Joseph Stalin. He was probably the biggest murderer. Pol Pot might have been worse of anybody who ever lived. I mean, I don't think Nimrod killed as many people as Stalin did. He killed many more people than Adolf Hitler. He died of old age. Nothing, nothing horrible happened to him. He didn't get run over by a truck or blown up by a tank. Nah, he died of old age. Boom, he just fell over. Went right straight to hell. Adolf Hitler. Uh, one of the worst people that ever lived he committed suicide quietly in his bunker. He was in a bunker and he just went down there with his wife and uh, 
that was it. Boom, took the took the poison. Boom, shot himself in the head. You know, nothing, nothing incredibly bad happened to him. But you see Christians being persecuted in the Middle East and in Africa, and they're being murdered and slaughtered. And faithful, wonderful servants of God being martyred. So sin extracts a horrible toll on humanity, but it extracts it in aberrant fashions. It's all different. It appears to be without rhyme nor reason. Good things happen to bad people. Bad things happen to good people. There's no way to predict it. But we all know that your sin somehow, some way, eventually will find you out. What God's speaking to you today, the fruitless fig tree parable in Luke 13. Look, mercy has come to you. And you may have had a season of unproductivity. You may have been living for yourself. You may have been selfish. You may have been disobedient. You have a period in your life where things are disobedient and you're not serving God during this period. And the mercy of God is calling out to you and is telling you, hey, let's let's pour some fertilizer on you. You need a big load of fertilizer poured on you? Doesn't sound good, but boy, it's a lifesaver. And let's give them one more year. Let's give them another chance. Grace and mercy from God is fantastic. It always gives you another chance you get another chance to change. But eventually, those chances run out. Time runs out. On a sinner, on a Christian, time runs out. Time ran out on the nation of Israel. 70 AD, the whole nation was destroyed. They tried to come back in 135 AD. Israel rebounded and tried to take back the temple and took back parts of Jerusalem. And the Romans said, no. You feisty little Jews. And they were slaughtered again, 135 AD. Now, as I'm talking to you, Hamas, Hezbollah and Iran and others are planning the destruction of Jerusalem. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, a war is going to break out in the Middle East pretty soon. Three years, no fruit, cut it down. And Mercy stepped in and the vine dresser said, I tell you what, let's give it one more year and I'll fertilize it. Then, if it doesn't produce fruit, let's cut it down. God is giving you fertilizer, so to speak, mercy and grace. He's giving you a boost. He's giving you God's energy. He is blessing you. And you are not, at this time, one of those Galileans that got killed. You're one of the Galileans that didn't get killed, that got away. At this time, at this time, you are, you're one of the people that should have been killed, but mercy fell upon you. Why doesn't God give mercy to this person? Why does he give it to that one? Why doesn't he give it to this one? Why does he give it to, why, 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 why? No one knows the exact answer. No one can figure it out, but we do know this. Eventually, eventually, nay, I say unto you, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish, Apollo me, you will come to total ruination. Total ruination. Okay, time is running out. Time is running out. Okay? Uh, I had another Bible study last year on the planet Earth. 
and the planet Earth is cursed. You and I live on a cursed planet. The whole planet Earth is under a curse. Genesis 3, the curse of this planet is real. This planet is jacked up from north to south pole all around the planet. Jacked uh, up. Okay? Everywhere the planet is jacked up. Floods. Tornadoes. Hurricanes. People dying everywhere. Volcanoes erupting. Geishers in California erupting. Hurricanes in Florida flooding everything. The whole planet is crazy. And as I said in that Bible study, the planet Earth, instead of being a blessing to everybody and everything, which it was originally intended, it was created perfectly with perfect beauty and perfectly designed to support life on the planet and to bless life on the planet after the curse fell on it, is actually a murderer of everything on the planet. The earth murders everything on the planet. It kills everything. Everything that is alive at this moment is in the process of dying. And that's why you and I die. That's why animals die. That's why insects die. That's why plants die. Everything, everything that's alive, the planet earth eventually murders. Everything dies. From dust you are, to dust you shall return. When and how that happens, as Jesus explained in Luke 13, is inexplicable. We don't know when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen. Good things happen to bad people. Bad things happen to good people. And there's no way to explain it. There is no apparent rhyme or reason to it. But the bottom line there's tremendous rhyme and reason to it. Nay, unless you, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Not in the same manner or at the same time. And mercy is available for you today. Grace is available to you today. Lord, let's take, let's take another year. Let's give this fig tree another year. I'll fertilize it. I'll dig it up and I'll fertilize the thing. And that should do it. And it should become productive for you. But if it doesn't, after it's been fertilized again, after it receives more grace, after more grace comes in, then we'll cut it down. That'll be the end of it. And I have in my office a list of people. I've mentioned this to you before. I've been doing this for what, a few decades. Okay, I have a list in my office of people who came to the Arizona Deliverance Center, people we worked with, people we tried to help, people that we tried to get to repent, Matano Ale, and they wouldn't do it, or they did temporarily, and then they went back, and so on. And that list of people on my desk are dead people. I keep track of them. I actually keep track of them. I know that sounds kind of morbid, but that list illustrates the parable of the fruitless fig tree. The people got fertilized. They received grace. They received the word. They received the mercy of God. But they did not repent and they did not change. And time ran out on them. Time ran out on them. Now, does time run out on everybody? Oh, sure. I'm not talking about general, people, generally speaking, dying. That's the planet Earth killing everything. We live on a cursed planet. That's a separate Bible study. I went over that last year. This is different. This is God talking to you. As he was talking to the nation of Israel, look, we'll give you another chance 
This is the fourth year. It was the fourth year of Jesus' ministry. He had gone through three years. The Jews didn't repent. They saw the Messiah in full power, fulfilling all the supernatural, powerful scriptures of Isaiah and Ezekiel and so on. There he was, live and in living color, and they wouldn't repent. They wouldn't change. So Jesus said, let's give them another year. Let's give them some more grace and wait and see if it produces. Israel did not produce and was destroyed in 70 AD. At the end of the fourth year, if that fig tree didn't produce, it was cut down. If you're in this season of your life, if this is your, if this is your season, wow. This is your season of that life. You have to change right now because God is fertilizing you, giving you another chance. He loves you. He wants to help you. He's trying to help you. He's fertilizing you. He's doing it for a reason. Why? Because sooner or later, It ends. It stops. It doesn't go on forever. It's temporary. And your time is now. And uh, you and I both know, looking at the news, looking at tribulation, it has to be just a few years away. I mean, this thing's so close, I can't even believe it. I never dreamed somebody at my age would ever could ever possibly be raptured. I didn't believe that was going to happen years ago. I'm starting to wonder if I'm going to make it. At my age, an old an old man like me. Wow, that's amazing. But it looks like it's it's right on top of us. And God needs you now more than ever. He needs you now to fulfill your destiny and your call to receive your gifts and your anointing and to make your move spiritually. He wants you to make your move now. He wants you to make major changes now because this is your fertilization period. Okay? You've been unproductive in the past. Like that fig tree. It went three years. Israel went three years. It wasn't productive. And God said, well, let's give them a fourth year. Let's fertilize them. Here, we'll give them the cross of Calvary. We'll give them the resurrection of Christ. We'll give them the day of Pentecost. We'll give them the revival. Let's fertilize Israel again and see what happens. Well, they never repented. Guess what happened? The nation was destroyed. And it stayed destroyed, believe it or not, until 1948. Can you imagine that? 1948. What was that? 1,945 years later, Israel finally returned? Well, that's a long time. Well, you and I don't have that kind of time, as you know. Human beings live... You know, what is the, what is the uh, statistics, 76 something, or I don't remember. I haven't looked it up lately, but, you know, some mid-70s or so, people die. That's statistically it. But God's not going to have you do that. He's going to fertilize you right now and give you grace and mercy and love and care. Why? He wants you productive, and he wants you ready to go. You are not to be a fruitless fig tree. That was the Jews. That was Israel. Okay, They did that. You are not supposed to do that. You are not supposed to do that. You are supposed to be a Holy Ghost filled spiritual powerhouse fertilized by God's word and the spirit of the Lord. And you are, to, you are supposed to be some kind of animal against the kingdom of darkness, you know, like King Kong or Godzilla or something like that. 
pounding down the gates of hell in your life and the lives of others. That's what you're supposed to be doing. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Now, the rapture either occurs before the tribulation or it re occurs at the end of the tribulation, or if it doesn't occur at all, it doesn't matter. It's all going to come to an end. The parable, the fruitless fig tree, comes to an end sooner or later. And that's what's going to happen to you if you do not repent. You have got to repent. And if you don't, you're going to get cut down by the devil. He's going to, he's going to smash you. God's not going to do it. But the law of sowing and reaping will come to fruition. And it's going to end for you. And I have that list in my office it's right there. Of all them dead people, they're all dead now. It's absolutely amazing. They're, they're all dead. They didn't listen. They wouldn't follow instructions. They got fertilized. They had manure dumped all over them. This is the only incident in the Bible where it's a glorious blessing to have somebody dump manure on you. It's a time of glorious celebration. I just got manure dumped on me. It's symbolic. Mercy, grace, love. It's all yours now. You need to be ready to go. But first, Jesus said, Nay, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And repentance doesn't have anything to do with church doctrines or whether you believe the rapture is real or the second coming is real or the millennial is real. Or none of that stuff matters. Repentance is personal. It's your personal sin. Do you need to repent for criticizing others? Do you need to repent for your temper? Do you need to repent for this or that? Now is the time to do it because this is your season of fertilization. You are in your manure season. Take a whiff of that. <sighs> Phew. Grace, mercy, love is yours. And it's time for you to make your move now. Okay? I had a service yesterday in Carlsbad. It was one of the worst services I've ever had in my ministry. I was just, I was standing there, I was stunned. Everybody that showed up to the service, literally, either was totally disinterested in the Word of God or repenting or serving God, or they were not really interested in deliverance. I had never had that happen. I never had that happen since 2004. I had never had a service like that where every single person in the service either wasn't interested at all or they were not God seekers and had no interest in being delivered from demons, had no desires, no fight, no nothing for God. It was phenomenal. I, had, I was stunned. But was I stunned? No. What happened was I taught the word of God to them. I did the best I could to um, bad ground. Most of the people there were bad ground. Didn't matter to me. I just, I taught as strong and as hard as I possibly could to help them. Okay? Why? Because of manure. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's poop season. Poop season is wonderful. It's a season of fertilization. And God is going to fertilize you. But remember, remember, at the end of the fertilization period, if you haven't responded to it, guess what happens? Yikes. It comes to an end. Does it come to a horrible end like the Galileans? Not necessarily. Are you going to die in a hurricane or a flood? Not necessarily. Jesus was explaining there's no rhyme nor reason intellectually 
why this occurs and why that occurs. That's not your emphasis. The point is that it runs to an end. Somehow, in some way, the fertilization period en ends. Your season of poop dissipates. Please don't let that happen to you. Take advantage of the season of grace and mercy and love. It's being poured all over you, and God wants to help you. He cares about you. He needs to help you. He enjoys it. But the nation of Israel was wiped out by the Romans, 70 A.D., 135 A.D. It happened twice. Cut. Cut it, dude. They were given chance after chance after chance to change. Okay? And you are being given chance after chance after chance to change. It's time for you to change. Okay? Time for you to change. Getting upset and concerned and babbling about church doctrines over and over again, that it's coming to an end. It's going to stop. Man. Fighting over hell, fighting over water baptism. Oh, geez. Fighting over the rapture. What a waste of life. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. See you next time.